Today we're going to be talking about graphs of power functions. Uh, first let's take a look at the function y equals ax to the n, where a is going to be a real constant and n is a rational number. So that's what's going to make this a power function. First thing we're going to do is take a look at the case of y equals ax to the n, where n equals 0. So when n equals 0, um, you can imagine this as y equals a times x to the power of 0, and we know that anything to the power of 0, except for 0, equals 1, so that's really just y equals x. This is known as a constant function, and we've learned about this before. Um, one example of it would be like this, where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, y equals 5 is shown by this red line, and y equals 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5 is shown by the blue line. So that's just your simple constant function that we've talked about before. The next example of y equals ax to the n now is when x n equals 1. So when n equals 1, when your exponent there is 1, you get a function that just looks like y equals ax. So this is a linear function, and again, we've had experience with that before. One example we have here is y equals negative x, so we could see that slope of negative 1, and we also have an example over here of y equals 4x. So these are examples of two linear functions. Now as we move on, we have y equals ax to the n, where n equals 2. So you're dealing with y equals ax squared. And here we have two separate examples of the quadratics, again, things that we've been dealing with before. So you have here something like, it's not exact, but y equals a negative x squared, if you remember, because it's brownie. And then something up over here, which is about y equals one-half x squared. It's not exactly x squared, it's bending out a little, and that's going to get our value. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the third case. So when our exponent is 3, so we're going to have y equals ax to the third. So that's a cubed value. Huh, I wonder what that graph looks like. Well, first thing I'm going to do is create a table. Let's move that over here. So I have um, values set up from negative 3 to positive 2. And if x equals negative 3, um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and use these values to take a look at what the graph y equals x to the cubed, so your standard cubic graph. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. I plug in negative 3 for x, I get negative 27. Negative 2 for x, I get negative 8, and I move on down the line. So you can kind of see values get negative, then they get positive again. But is it going to look like a quadratic? Well, if we graph the values, what we see is that it doesn't look like a quadratic. This is a different type of graph. This is a cubic graph. And when we uh, put all the points together, we could see it makes this kind of smooth curve. That's pretty, pretty sweet to look at. Now we're going to go ahead and go in the other direction for a different type of graph. And so this is when n equals negative 2. So when n equals negative 2, if you remember when dealing with negative exponents, then what this is going to look like is y equals a over x squared. So this is what it looks like when you're dividing by that x squared. This is a cool looking graph. The last one we're going to look at, we're going to look at next is when n equals a negative 1. So this is y equals a over x. So dividing by that x value gives you a graph that looks like this. Um, what we're going to be doing over the next couple days is focusing on the different types of graphs, how to graph them, and how we can tell what the graphs will look like, in addition to other cool and neat vocabulary.